when we were talking on phone, you and I yesterday, and of course, and this show is a day late because we it just seriously, folks. So we're trying to push through with this thing because people are dependent on us. Um, but it's one day late. But when we were talking yesterday about trying to get together and record today, I told you, I said, there's one story I didn't tell because I, I, I couldn't think, but I should have told this story. I'm going to tell it today because you hadn't heard it. And I, see, the thing is, I've told so many of these stories over the years in various venues and forums. I forget that it's been so long in some cases, or we've got so many new listeners and I just think, well, I don't want to go over that again. And then everybody, goes, oh, Jesus Christ, we haven't heard this. But one of the ribs Bobby used to do, and it, it was like everything else that, well, not everything, most everything we did in our matches, the the Midnight Express spots and the finishes and the routines and the whatever that we ended up developing. It, I've said this before, it's kind of like a parallel in those days when you worked every night uh, in the territories was like old time vaudeville where you just, you'd do something on the spur of the moment, you'd react to something that happened. And it would get a reaction, and then you would start, well, and you work that in, and you'll start making the thing happen that got you to give that reaction that got a reaction, and blah, 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 right? That's how you work shit out. So we did it in the car, too, and we did it just in, in, in I've told stories before how Bobby would instigate an argument with me in, in convenience stores, right? Like, I've Corn, I want some Snapple. You can't have Snapple, Bobby. He just he just come up and say, Corn, and that look on his face, I, I want some Snapple. You can't have Snapple, Bobby. I told you that before. And if we're the arguing and the guy at the cashier is, you know, at the cash register is like, what the fuck's going on here? And then Bobby would slide his hand right up in front of his face, up and down, right? Like the tomahawk chop. But if you got your back to somebody... And you do that, and the guy standing in front of you slaps the hand, and you sell like Bobby Eaton sells. It looks like I slapped the shit out of somebody, right? <laughs> right. And on a couple of cases, I'd give him a working slap, but I could tell when he was he would instigate it. He'd keep picking at me and trying to get me to argue back with him, and then finally either he'd slip the hand up, or if the guy could see, he'd give me the Iggy like he would in the ring, and I'd slap him. It's like a Three Stooges routine, right? And I'd grab him by the ear and walk him out of the goddamn store and he'd be go, oh, corny, corny, I just wanted to snapple. And then I'd put him in the car <laughs> and I'd come back in and get the drinks. I'm sorry about him. You know, and he'd be, he'd be it's one time I looked, he was sitting out on the hood with his his arms crossed like O.P. Taylor sitting on the hood of the car with a pout on his face, like mucking him a snap or whatever. But anyway, <clears throat> so the bread truck thing, a.k.a. the brakes, the brakes. A lot of times in those days, we were taking cabs. And we hated to take cabs because you had to be dependent on where you, where you could get it to come to. And, and then you had to be sitting around with no transportation afterwards waiting on it. And also we had to cram in the cab. And that was, that was even before. I don't know if people realize this now. The last times I've been in cabs in at least New York City, uh, you can't get in the front seat with them. Is that, a, is that a thing just up there? Or is that everywhere that you can't get in the front seat anymore? It's a thing in New York City specifically because of uh, the people that shoot cab drivers oh, yeah, they, and rob them. Yeah. But like on Long Island, when you get off the Long Island Railroad, usually the local taxi that that's at the station, they'll just get as many people in there. They'll put them in the trunk if they have to. Okay, well, and we've been in there a few times also. But, but anyway, there's three of us. It's either me and Bobby and Dennis or me and Bobby and Stan. And anytime we had to get a cab, a lot of times we would fly in commercial to Hartsfield in Atlanta. And we would literally land at 845, have to be at TBS at 10 o'clock, and it's 15 miles. Now you couldn't make it. I don't think you can make the trip that fast. Uh, but uh, Or, you know, whatever. We're, it's just a last-second thing. We're getting in a cab. We're going. And some night you get stuck in traffic in these cities. I think the first time was someplace like Chicago. It wasn't Atlanta. But even back then, 35 years ago, the cab drivers... Sometimes English was a second language and they were new to the culture. So you could kind of fuck with them without, because they were like, what are these fucking crazy Americans? Right. And also think of what the cab driver had to think when he pulls up. And especially when Dennis, because Stan looks so fucking wholesome and all American, but there's Dennis with that beard and those gig marks, <laughs> and that surly look on his face. And it's in the wintertime. He's wearing a fur lined leather jacket. 
and they're all, all these guys he's picking up are six feet tall and they're 230 pounds a piece. And depending on how fat I was. Right. So anyway, one day, I think by this time it may have been, it, it, Dennis may have been there, whatever. We're probably, as I said, in the Chicago environs and we're stuck in traffic. And Bobby was also flinchy at, at sudden loud noises coming from like behind him or whatever, you know, eh, well, she went to, you know, so Bobby's up in the front seat, me and Dennis are in the back. We've piled all our bags in the trunk and this fucking little bitty cab driver, he's a little old guy. He's like fucking five and a half feet tall and 125 pounds. And, you know, you can see him, he's kind of frustrated in the traffic and you see Bobby's, you know, sitting there just kind of staring out the window and what are the big truck brakes that make the big whine or squeal was that hydraulic type of thing. I, you think, know? I don't know. I have no well, idea. yeah, I thought you were a former truck driver. At least you used to hang around at a lot of truck stops, No, but it, anyway, you know, the big <laughs> truck that has the, the big cab and it, I know what you're talking about. Sure. Yeah. So that happens outside Bobby's window and he jumps. And when he jumps, the fucking cab driver jumps. Right. And he sees it and we all see it. And so now he knows he's onto something. And and so a couple seconds later, he kind of just does the, almost like a killer Carl Cox thing. Does the, you know, the jump and like, he's looking up at Alex or whatever. And I pick up on it. I said, Bobby, did you take your medicine? No, corny. I didn't take it. I didn't have. I didn't bring it with me. Bobby, you know how you get when you don't take your medicine. And just now he's looking for. And now he starts flinching again. And if some other noise happens, he starts flinching. And 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 I reach up because I'm sitting behind him. I reach up and pat him on the shoulders a couple of times. Bobby, calm down now. And then I just say to the guy, say, you know, here's the problem. Was I'm sorry, sir, but. Bobby had an accident a couple of years ago. He was, he was run over by, and I said this with a straight face. I can't say it now. I said he was, he was run over by a, a rainbow bread truck. And the last thing <laughs> that he, he remembers when he woke up, the last thing he remembers is the squeal of the brakes. <laughs> and, and then Bobby is hearing this for the first time, right? Cause I'm making it up. <laughs> but I, I said, he, you, you know, he usually takes his neurological medicine, but, but Bobby, it'd be okay. Just he loud noises are, you know, somewhat of a trigger, right? So then he starts rocking back and forth and kind of feeling his forehead. And then he goes, he's like, the brakes, the brakes, and he lunged, and now we're in traffic. <laughs> we're not going we're not going like 60 miles an hour. We're in traffic here stuck. And it's like 15, 10 mile an hour switch lane type of thing. But he goes, the brakes, the brakes. And he lunges over and drag with both hands, grabs the guy's steering wheel. Like he's going to try to save us all. And I, <laughs> and I reach up and grab him and hook him and pull him back. Like we're doing a spot. No, Bobby, no. And he's got the brakes, the brakes. And this guy, and he's, is he going to do that? No, no, I've got him now. And, and Dennis, I think it was like, you know, don't, Bobby, now come on now. But don't worry, pal. We'll take care of what? Could Dennis keep a straight face while this whole thing is going on? Dennis could keep a straight face. It, it, Dennis never had any other kind of face, but a straight face, <laughs> unless he wanted to, he could laugh his ass off. But no, Dennis, Dennis never let on what was going on. I'll tell you a story about that in a minute, but. But anyway, so this guy can't get there fast enough to get rid of us. And then that became something that we started doing to, to occupy ourselves in the cab. And every time either Bobby could bring it on by <laughs> rubbing his head and corny the brakes. Or, <laughs> or if I saw something that came up, I said, Bobby, you take your medicine. But goddamn, those cab drivers would think, what the fuck? I'm in here in this with in this cab with these three lunatics and this guy's going off because he got run over by a rainbow bread truck and i felt I, I felt proud of myself that i specified the brand of bread to give it a little bit more legitimacy we i knew exactly what brand of the bread that the bread truck was carrying even if you guys are all in street clothes, once Bobby had the bleach blonde hair, there's no cab driver that would ever encounter three human beings that look like the three of you getting into a cab at one time. Oh, God. <laughs> it would go exactly how they thought it could possibly go when they picked yeah. you up. 